third world of film that is brilliant to some and bizarre to others. American director David Lynch has made movies that delight and sometimes disgust, and now he's got an eerie new film out. It's called Blue Velvet. With his current movie, Blue Velvet, Lynch takes us into the strange, subconscious world of his other films. Its cast includes bad guy Dennis Hopper and the exotic Isabella Rossellini, and its nightmarish vision is likely to disturb as many people as it fascinates. And David Lynch joins me now from Montreal. David, what is this movie about? This movie, I say, is about um, the uh, mysteries of... Uh, darkness and love. That's sort of hard to do, isn't it? I actually found the movie very disturbing. Surrealist filmmaker David Lynch's fourth feature film, Blue Velvet, follows Jeffrey Beaumont after he finds a severed ear in a field. Jeffrey brings the ear to Detective John Williams and reconnects with the detective's daughter, Sandy, who mentions a possible connection between the ear and a lounge singer, Dorothy Valens. Jeffrey and a reluctant Sally hatch a plan to uncover the truth behind the ear, which includes Jeffrey infiltrating Dorothy's apartment posing as a pest exterminator and stealing one of her house keys. He then sneaks back into her apartment later that night and hides in her closet. Dorothy ultimately catches him, but before she can get the answer to what he's doing there, another man, Frank Booth, knocks on the door. From inside the closet, Jeffrey watches as Frank beats and assaults Dorothy while huffing some type of narcotic gas. Frank rapidly switches back and forth from a violent maniac to a sobbing boy moment to moment. Jeffrey suspects that Frank has abducted Dorothy's husband and son, the ear being that of her husband, and is holding them hostage in order to have sexual control over Dorothy. Later on, Jeffrey sees Frank talking to a man referred to as the Yellow Man and meets with Dorothy again. The pair are caught by Frank and his band of goons and are taken on a so-called joyride to one Ben's house, where Dorothy's husband and child are being held in another room. The group continue to an abandoned sawmill where Frank attempts to assault Dorothy again before Jeffrey punches him in the face and stops their interaction. Frank reacts by smearing lipstick on his mouth and kissing Jeffrey before beating him unconscious and leaving with Dorothy. When Jeffrey awakes the next morning, he and Sandy attend a party where they admit their love for each other. While leaving the party, they are chased by a car that they believe has Frank inside, but it is only that of Sandy's ex-boyfriend Mike, who wants to beat up Jeffrey for stealing his girl. Mike backs down after a new Dorothy wanders through the front lawn of Sandy's house. The two bring Dorothy in and tell Sandy's father, Detective Williams, all of the details of the situation. Jeffrey returns to Dorothy's apartment one last time, where he discovers her husband, Don, dead and the yellow man mortally wounded. Jeffrey uses a walkie-talkie to trick Frank into thinking he is in the bedroom of the apartment while he goes back and hides in the closet and scares Frank with a bullet to the head just before Detective Williams busts in. The film concludes with Dorothy being reunited with her son and Sandy spotting a robin, a reference to an earlier conversation she and Jeffrey had. One of the first pieces of confusion for an audience member is likely that of the ear. When asked in a 1986 New York Times interview why he chose an ear to be what Jeffrey finds, Lynch remarked, I don't know why it had to be an ear, except it needed to be an opening of a part of the body, a hole into something else. The ear sits on the head and goes right into the mind, so it felt perfect. As an ear can be an opening to the mind, Lynch dives into that opening and examines the human psyche through these characters. Similar to most surrealist works, Lynch follows the ideals of psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud, and Blue Velvet is an excellent example of this. Freud theorized that the human psyche is composed of three parts, the id, the superego, and the ego, each of which can be followed throughout this film.
Freud's psychoanalytic theory describes the id as primitive and instinctual. It is the part of the mind that contains sexual and aggressive desires. Throughout Blue Velvet, the id is represented most obviously through Frank, played by Dennis Hopper. His aggressive sexual nature and violent behaviors show clearly to us that his id is the driving force behind his actions. He acts off his instinct and wants regardless of the consequences against others. He does not consider what is right or objectively good, instead only considering what will bring him satisfaction. Frank's erratic switches in behavior show that he is not thinking of his actions, only committing that which he wants to commit, following what Freud called the pleasure principle. He lacks a sense of morals and boundaries, letting his id consume him. The superego is best represented by Laura Dern's character, Sandy. The superego is the second part of Freud's unconscious mind and represents our self-criticisms and moral values. It is what drives us to do right. Although aiding in Jeffrey's plans, Sandy repeatedly warned him of the moral implications that came of his actions and pleaded for him to give it up. She is a girl who prides herself on being home before late or not being seen with another man who is not her boyfriend. Sandy is Frank's foil, heavily considering her actions before committing to them. She follows what is morally just and sticks to it, avoiding the shame, guilt, and consequence of one who takes the opposite route. As Jeffrey's confidant, she helps to ground him and lead him down the right path. Representing the final part of Freud's psyche, our only conscious part, the ego, is our most complex character yet, our protagonist Jeffrey. The ego is the culmination of both the id and the superego to form a balance in how we act. It is how we present ourselves. Throughout the film, we watch as Jeffrey transforms from an innocent young man to one who sees the evil that lies just behind the curtains of our world. His id and his superego push and pull him into conflicting scenarios. Jeffrey's id beckons him to further investigate the ear against the persuasion of Sandy and fall for Dorothy, while his superego pushes him to stick up for and help Dorothy and give love to the safe choice of Sandy. He is the poster child for that of the average person giving in to some temptation and following what is right in other scenarios. His clearest image of this is of course in the third act, when he shoots and kills Frank. His superego tells him that it is wrong to kill, that he should just wait until the detective shows up, but his id begs the question of if it is justified. The two clash, but they form a compromise in what becomes our actions. Blue Velvet is a look into the lives of any community, albeit an exaggerated version of one. We experience elements of both sides, our ids and that of bad people around us, and our superego or the people in our support system. We find that most of us all land somewhere in the middle with our ego balanced, and this film does a phenomenal job in showing that type of dichotomy and transformation through Lynch's characters. Lynch's ability to depict abstract feelings or ideas through his films is unmatched. I'm sure if you were to have him make a movie based on a book, he could find those minute details in the characters and use his vision to create a masterful result. Thanks for watching.